I had a conversation with Alex the other day, and it was a meaningful conversation for me because he had been in a tough spot, I think, emotionally for a couple of months now. You know, he had mm-hmm. kind of ups and downs, but overall, I think he would describe his last couple of months as difficult and challenging. Okay. And he came back to Germany from South Africa, and I knew that he's a little bit in a funk, and I wanted to talk to him, and I waited for the right opportunity where I would have time, space, and presence, like where I would not just call for a quick 15-minute catch-up, quote-unquote, but I would Mm -hmm. have time to really talk. And I called him, and we started talking, and he starts sharing some of his challenges with me, right? Some of the emotional things and turmoil that he's been going through over the last few weeks. And instantly, those stories triggered in me the need to share some of my recent triumphs that relate to his struggles. It was He was sharing struggles that I, rec- I personally interpreted and recognized as struggles that I had gone through as well, and I found some new doors to open recently. This is not unusual behavior. Friend tells me about problem X, and I enthusiastically tell him about how I solved problem X for myself. So I started sharing some of that, And instantly, he then responded very positively and gratefully and started asking me questions, but I could sense how the dynamic between us shifted. So from a one friend is calling another to a master or the teacher and the student are having a lesson. Mm -hmm. And as it was going on, I thought, well, I, did, I didn't call to solve problems or to give a lecture. I called to connect with a friend. And this, funny enough, although I am, quote unquote, providing value or sharing useful ideas, and he's, quote unquote, open and curious and is grateful to learn and to get advice, we are not connecting as friends right now. We're not mm-hmm. getting closer as friends. So as I was noticing that, I thought, well, do I want this? And I thought, no, I actually want something different out of this call. And so I stopped myself eventually and naturally in the conversation and I flipped the script. And so instead of continuing to tell him about all the solutions I've discovered, I shared one of my struggles recently with him. And I shared the struggle not because I needed a solution, nor because I needed a sympathy or empathy, I shared it to connect because my, he shared his hardship and so I'm sharing mine. And I did that just intuitively. I didn't think too much about it. I just shifted the energy and I just went, yeah, you know, one thing that was been difficult for me lately has been this thing. And he was like, the energy instantly shifted again. And we went from teaching student to friends. He started laughing and he... He brought up some stuff and then I started laughing and bringing up some other stuff. And then we went into this, into this place in the conversation where we just, we were laughing at our, our own stupidities and struggles with each other. Yeah. And eventually that, that conversation, because there was a lot of relaxation, there was humor, there was, mm. you know, sharing things that were kind of ridiculous or whatever, th- because of the, 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 the atmosphere that changed from this, you know, I stand on kind of a podium and I'm having a flip chart and I'm sharing things with him and he's down there taking notes studiously, you know, with his glasses on to us two being at a bar, having a drink, laughing, you know, at each other and our stupid, stupid recent stories. All of a sudden, there was a creativity that was unleashed where we started talking about things that were totally spontaneous and very stimulating and kind of very interesting. Like we started having a conversation similar to some of our recording sessions where we just go places, right? Where we don't, mm. it's not a Ramin, what should we talk about on today's podcast recording? Well, on my notes, it says, let's talk about, uh, you know, your inner fear. All right, let's talk for an hour about fear. It was just very spontaneous, very creative. And in that conversation, a bunch of interesting and cool things came up either ideas or stories or memories or recommendations like at the end you know at the at the end spontaneously i asked him dude you're a spiritual right do you have a daily spiritual practice and he's like oh i do this and this and i just recently discovered it i'm like ah because i'm thinking about doing something he's like oh, i'm gonna connect you with charlie and you know she has some cool ideas around that and we had a, a call 
where at the end, we talked for 90 minutes, at the end, he felt a lot better mm. than before. Yeah. I felt a lot better. Yeah. We had fun. We did learn from each other. You know, we did mm -hmm. share some stuff, but it was not teacher-student learning. It's like yeah. peer. And my main goal for reaching out and calling him was accomplished because at the end he said, dude, it was so, it feels so good to connect, not just to talk, but to feel like we've connected again, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have talked and written to each other a number of times over the last four months, but I didn't feel like we weren't connected, you know? And like, it feels so good to have, like to feel close to you again as a friend, to feel like, you know, we've, we've gotten closer again. And we ended the conversation and I was very happy about it. One, because it was the type of experience that I was looking for. And I also felt that I, as a friend, had been more useful to him than I would have been as a teacher. Right? Alex knows everything that I could t teach him. There's, he reads a million books a day. He's doing a, a thousand coaching sessions. He has a shaman here, a yoga teacher there, this there, that, a psychologist there. He's drowning in advice, coaching, and teachers. Yeah, yeah. And he's not lacking for more information, yeah. right? Or one more person to lecture him. But the thing that he didn't have maybe recently as much was just a friend that could relate, right? And open up as much. So I, I felt like I was much more useful in that modality of a friend than I would have been in the modality of a mentor and teacher. And... I um, had a lot more fun. It was a much more fulfilling experience for me. I have done this so many times in the past where I call a friend and then I step into the teacher or mentor role and then I would give you know a coaching session of an hour and we hang up and the friend says, oh, thank you so much. You always help me, blah, 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 whatever. But we hang up and I'm exhausted now. And I'm also not happy. And I don't know why, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and where I felt that all that, it, all that stuff that I told them, the person ends the conversation by thinking, well, Steli knows a lot and Steli is really wise, or but they're not feeling better and they're not implementing any of the advice that I gave. Yeah, yeah. So what was the fucking point? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, even as we were talking, you know, funny, there was a criticism I had for him. Like he has been coaching people, you know, he's been doing, um, MDMA therapy sessions and he's done you know, psilocybin retreats and he's done a, 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 a session with one of my brothers and my brother recently told me a little criticism that he had about Alex, right? Mm -hmm. And my old self would have instantly wanted to call him and tell him this. Hey, dude, you should know this. Here's a criticism. Here's how you should do better. You know, you should have this valuable data. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that he should know this because it's going to help him. But when I was on the call with him, when it came up, I rejected it as today is not the day to bring this up. Mm -hmm. And then later and spontaneously within the conversation, I remembered the first MDMA therapy session that Alex did with me and how incredibly valuable that has been in my life. Right? Yeah. That has cascaded into a domino effect that has helped me so much. And then I just told him that. I told him, dude, you know how much I love you? You know how much this first session that we did together, how much that has taught me, how much value this brought to my life, how valuable that has been. And that was you. And so I'll never forget that. And I'm super grateful for it. And his response was, oh my fucking God, you don't know how good that feels right now. He's like, I really needed to hear that. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, he's like, that's what I really needed right now, which it translates to, dude, I've been so hyper self-critical and I've so stuck in trying to change myself in certain ways, not being able to. And I've had a difficult time because of that over criticalness to see the good things about me and to have yeah. to be, as present as I want to be in the work that I'm doing. And you've reminded me of why I love what I do and that I am worthy and that I do good shit. And wow, that is what I, it, he needed encouragement and love and appreciation more than he needed criticism and suggestions for improvements. Right. Right. Okay. And so that was one of my, that was 
one of my favorite <laughs> conversations with a friend recently because it had a big arc of I started down a path yeah. that I have walked on thousands of times in my life, but I was able to notice it, correct notice it, it. Yeah. And, com and change the quality of the conversation. And then also realize, wow, this is, there's a time and place for everything. But oftentimes, especially with my friends, I wanted closeness or I wanted to be connected and they wanted a friend and I turned into a mentor and a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And then they turned inevitably into a student, you know, mm -hmm. and a mentee. And we both, although in theory, isn't this a good thing to learn from somebody? In theory, it was a good thing, but in practice, it didn't really enrich yeah. anyone's life. You actually it, learned less from each other. Then. Yeah, yeah. But we made our relationship friends. poorer and our life depleted yeah. versus fuller and richer, right? Yeah. And I was telling this to my mom yesterday because my mom is notorious for having all these friends, all these women friends, where it's a totally one-sided thing. They call with their problems and my mom is giving them solutions. And that's all that's happening, right? They just call with all their problems and my mom is, you know, listening to everything, all their complaints, all the bitching, all the problems, all the, the pain. And then she's offering a list of improvements. And I was telling you, you know, sometimes when you share a problem, when somebody shares a problem, the nicest, the best thing you can do is to open up as well and just share another problem of yours. And sometimes you don't have to solve problems. This is, for men especially, a difficult thing to conceptualize, right? This is something I, I really didn't understand when I would read about relation, or I would read relationship advice and people would write, you know, men always want to solve problems when you're your significant other, your wife, your partner yeah. is sharing problems with you. Don't so offer solutions. Yeah. And I was thinking, what do you mean? I can't just sit here and listen yeah. to complaints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I supposed to do with complaints? I want to solve things. I'm a man. Yeah. Like, to me, this is dumb. We're wasting time. And now, not to say that this is supernatural and second nature, and not to say that it always is the right thing. Sometimes somebody just wants to complain, and you shouldn't be listening. Right? right? Listening isn't helpful. But yeah. the concept that we actually don't become closer by being superior to others and solving their problems and having solutions and answers to their questions, but we come closer to each other by how much we feel seen and accepted and how much the other person opens up so that we can see them and accept them and love them, right? Like how much do we open up each other to each other and allow each other to see each other for who we are in that moment. That's what makes people feel, I think, really, really close. Well, that's a big part of, at least, um, when people offer me value or solutions or advice, that actually, although that might be the right thing, that will never make you feel close to people. Mm. That would typically, that creates a hierarchy where they are above you in that moment, at least. Yeah, wild, wild shit. To, many, to some people, this might seem like the most obvious thing in the universe, but to me, this is like groundbreaking new territory in behavior, you know. Yeah. This is completely new behavior. And, and I really loved, I loved the change in energy in the conversation where it started off with a friend being a little open and going, hey, I have this problem, I have these things that I'm going, and then I'm like, oh, you know, let me tell you this impressive story about how I handled this. Mm -hmm. And there was this, oh, this is a very useful conversation, but we're both very tense to then just a relaxation and a just, hey, let me tell you about my fucking problems. And then yeah. we're laughing at our problems and then we're reminiscing and, you know, philosophizing about life. And then uh, all of a sudden we're just two friends. Uh, and there's like yeah. this humor that it was there all of a sudden. There was this uh, creativity that was there all of a sudden. Um, and, and, most of all, there was a real relaxed comfort and love, like being comfortable with each other, um, where the beginning of the conversation was going in a completely different direction. So super, super nice to see and to experience. I was thinking about a, a conversation I had with someone a while ago where I caught myself in that exact same thing 
Mm. Uh, she just wanted someone to to listen. I was coming up with solutions and ideas, and oh, you, you know, how about this? How about and then trying to convince her that well, if you don't do anything else, then try at least this. What is there to lose if you don't try this, right? And at least try it. And if it doesn't work, you can still, but at least try it, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that didn't went well. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't work out, huh? No. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how that goes. Didn't help. It is mm -hmm. funny how that goes. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, the other funny thing about this is how it's the type of thing where you would do something that doesn't work, which is give advice. The person is not taking it. And then you are getting angry because you think, well, why is this person not more flexible? Not realizing right. the irony of it because you keep yeah. insisting on doing yeah. the thing you're that is not stuff, working. Yes. You're super inflexible, but then you're annoyed that this person is not mm -hmm. changing their behavior and just listening mm -hmm. to your advice instead mm -hmm. of adjusting what you're doing. Flexibility, uh, something. I was thinking about this the other day. Really, mastery and truth in, in anything and everything can be found whenever you have relaxed action. Mm. Relaxed action is really the pinnacle of mastery in some way, right? Relaxed action, but also focused or engaged, right? I mean, you can also do relaxed action while being kind of larifari about it. Mm, yeah, by not paying attention. Not relaxed because of lazy, right? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a kind of be water, my friend. When you can engage as an element, but you don't hold any specific form, that's where all the magic lies. Mm -hmm. All the suffering really and all the, the, the difficulty is always a result of holding tension and a form that is not appropriate right now. It's not working right now, but you're persisting.